up, you guys? Bat Jack JW coming to you. Well, uh, I think it's time that we do this video, and <laughs> I definitely think it's a uh, long overdue. And it's basically about my John Wayne stuff, my John Wayne gear. Uh, those of you that are new to the channel, um, you know, I'm a big fan of John Wayne, and throughout my videos, I like to include a lot of his stuff throughout. And uh, of course, some of my favorite guns to take to the range is definitely the old single action pistols. Um, both of mine are in 45 Colt. I know that he was also using a 4440. I do want to get one of those someday. Um, I'm a hand loader, so the brass is not quite available as I'd like it right now. So, and maybe one day. But anyway, but I stuck with the old, uh, good old 45 Colt. But anyway, <laughs> um, this stuff, as I got older, um, you know, wanting his guns and everything, uh, you kind of noticed that he carried a certain kind of a pistol with a certain type of grips on it mainly um, pretty much from what I noticed the sons of Katie Elder and on uh, he pretty much had his famous uh, what it would uh, his yellow or ivory so-called uh, yellow aged ivory handled uh, grip gun and uh, so this is my Cimarron let's make sure it's not loaded um, this is my Cimarron rooster shooter Okay, so this is a gun that I found in the American Rifleman magazine, uh, thanks to the NRA for sending that to me one month. And I saw it, and right when I laid my eyes on it, I had to have one. So I called up my friend, a gun dealer, and I said, hey, I gotta have this Cimarron Rooster Shooter. Well, um, the story with that, I had to have a video on that, so I'm not gonna rehash it too much. Um, but these are not the original grips that came on that gun. The original grips that came on that gun is actually these right here. And um, this is made by a company called Bar S. And I uh, figured that out when I had to take them off because I dropped them and broke them. It was stamped on the other side. They broke right here. And Bar S is no longer in business or they're no longer making grips. First thing I did in the morning was called Cimarron. That's how I found out about all that. And uh, could not get another pair of grips from them. They said, uh, you're kind of lucky to have one right now. We're kind of currently trying to figure out somebody to make them. Um, it was rather disappointing for me to hear something like that. And I was very distraught about it. You can, I mean, just I couldn't believe it. But it was almost a blessing in disguise. Because as I started to take a look at these and uh, think about it, I looked at it and looked at it and more and more I thought I could probably make something like this. I didn't start off that way of course. Uh, I started off by uh, buying what you usually see in the store and staining them. Here's a pair right here. Uh, these are stained. I stained these. These are your s simple uh, poly ivory or whatever they call it and um, I stained them. This swirling it just kind of happened along with the staining. I think that's just part of the character in the casting of the resin or whatever the poly um, material that they cast these things out of and uh, that's what happened I have another set right here that I stained as well these are the same uh, same ones only these didn't have that streaks going through it I guess you could say I bought these from Brownells they're about 30 40 bucks a pop uh, made by NC Ordnance. I did do a video on staining these. You just use the leather dye. That's what I use. So if you want to do this yourself to yours and make it a little bit more aged looking, you can use leather dye because that's what works. Um, <laughs> anyway, mostly actually what here I got a pair right here. I'll pop them right out of the box just for you guys. This is usually what you get. Uh, poly ivory. This is what they usually look like. Pretty, you know, fairly white. Um, but anyway, no, I started to uh, come a long way to making my own, and these here I reproduced uh, from basically looking at these. Obviously, the finger groove section is a little bit darker, not sure why, than the other side, so I tried to copy the same color. Of course, I'm left-handed, so I put my finger grooves on the right side of the panel. Anyway, all right, moving on to kind of the leather. We'll get back to the grips. The leather stuff, I really want to say... Um, a really great company, Hunter Leather. They're out of Westminster, Colorado. I used to live in Colorado, so I definitely wanted to support them and get theirs. So here's the, um, without banging the buckle into my guns, um, 
This is the leather suede belt that is seen mostly the Duke is kind of wearing a lot. He wears this rig, this kind of belt, in quite a few of his westerns. And of course his holster is kind of this, you know, with a big, uh, you know, kind of a band going around it. Now this is a uh, holster by, I believe this is a Galco. Yes, it is a Galco. I bought this from Cabela's years ago. This is the first... Um, Kind of Duke holster I bought. Uh, I did. I do have another one. Yeah, it's kind of buried over here. Um, but it wasn't quite like this. Uh, but this is the first one that I bought that was really close to the Duke style holster. Anyhow, but I did. I, uh, Hunter Leather does offer their style of a Duke holster. I do want to get it. Um, it's a little bit of cash, but uh, that's how leather stuff works. I mean, you're going to pay some money for this stuff. You got to really want it. Uh, my belt buckle, I just kind of aged it a little bit um, simply by putting some gun bluing on it to kind of age it up a little bit. Um, I put a little leather dye on the uh, leather here uh, just to kind of distress it a little bit, make it look a little worn. And honestly, the dirtiness of the suede just kind of happened. I did not do that on purpose. It just kind of happened. But anyway, if you're definitely looking for the belt, Hunter Leather is the company to go to. They're really great people out of Westminster, Colorado. So... All right, um, the Rooster Shooter basically is a gun as it is from Cimarron. It came acid washed. I didn't really care for that finish because every time I touched it, it would rust. So I went ahead and just uh, kind of uh, rust blued it really, kind of the old fashioned way. So a lot of people, when they see this gun up close uh, in person, they go, man, that, how old is that? Does that thing even still work? It just looks like that. It, it's a really worn out looking gun. I, it's one of my favorite guns really. Uh, if you look at my top five videos, this is definitely one of them. So uh, if you didn't want to spend the money, you want to just get your, uh, you know, what are the other ones that they offer. This is the Frontier model, 45 Colt with the four and three quarter barrel as uh, the standard John Wayne size. This is their Frontier model. And I think you can get these for like 500 bucks or something like that around there. Uh, they're fairly inexpensive, uh, at least, you know, not what I mean by that is you're not going to pay a thousand dollars for it. Um, so again, I outfitted it with some custom grips that I made myself with the finger grooves, with the aged patina yellow. This one's got a little bit more streaking going through it. I was doing some other types of uh, designs with the aging of it, but for the most part, I like to outfit my guns pretty much with that kind of grips. I'll show you a brief uh, little collection of the grips I've made. Um, this is a pair I made out of a 2x4 just for fun and put some extensive grip uh, grooves in it and everything, you know, one for the thumb and then the three for the finger and then kind of uh, burned them to get that effect and then painted them yellow. Uh, this is just, you know, some scrap 2x4 my friend had laying around his uh, construction site. So I, I said, hey, I want that scrap 2x4. He goes, by all means, take it. <laughs> Here's another pair I made. These are a little bit lighter on the uh, age. You've seen these uh, on outfitted on this gun uh, quite a bit in the videos of more recent ones. Um, this one's got a little bit more... Um, blondish color to it with the uh, age kind of streaking marbling through there. I put these together as a one piece grip. Um, those of you that don't really understand what that is, that's a um, it's a block of wood really and you just epoxy it in and you to install it you take off these two screws in the back one over here take the frame off and then slide it in between. Here's another pair I made. These are kind of more aged out. Um, definitely a lot more uh, rot going through there and these are kind of inspired to me from the shootist uh, his his final film that was actually uh, from what I read is real ivory on those guns and they were made by great great Western they were not made by a uh, cult or anything so that was kind of different and that was the first movie he really kind of changed it up his entire rig so yeah the Duke went and changed everything on us <laughs> but no for the most part yeah he's wearing that suede leather uh, belt the other thing I want to talk about before we get back into the grips, uh, I just want to kind of um, punctuate this video with the grip talk, you know, just so it's not just a straight up grip video. This is a reproduction of the infamous Red River D belt buckle that he had uh, been given after they finished the movie Red River by Howard Hawks. And the story goes is that everybody had their initials right here. 
Okay, now that's Howard Hawks' initials. That's because John Wayne traded his belt buckle with Howard Hawk because he admired the guy so much, so they traded off uh, belt buckles. So for a number one, a number of his westerns, a lot of his really infamous westerns, um, John Wayne, you can note notice he's wearing this belt buckle. Um, when you start to actually look for it, you'll you'll start to notice it right away. Um, I like to wear it and wear it in the videos and wear it out uh, sometimes. You know, just just the kicks. I, I'm like I said, I'm a pretty big John Wayne fan. I really like his movies. I think the guy was amazing because what you got on camera is what you got off camera. He was the real deal. He was not one of those actors that off camera, Mister. Oh, I hate guns and blah. No, he was really. He loved America, loved guns. He was a great man, and I. Really Really, I feel like I wish I would have been able to meet him. I'd probably faint <laughs> if I did. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm kind of a fanboy. Okay, so the, that's that one. This is the uh, a different one. This is made out of uh, a pewter, and it's kind of a little bit more worn, different look to it. So um, there was only one place to get these, and that was on eBay. And so I went ahead and ordered them, and this one came with it. So really cool. I had to have this stuff. This is... Um, go to the store every now and then and i saw these and i had to get them the uh, legacy of john wayne it's a really cool magazine look at that got the duke on the back duking it out but it's got a really cool look of everything he does in the, you know in the pictures and everything and then this one the american icon so you know and i love how they show pictures of things that he you know like actual you know his personal items his boots i heard are lucases very expensive uh that's what i heard he wears maybe someday if i can afford to get a pair okay um now the grips wise there are other companies that make a really good copy of the grips such as like these these are made by buffalo brothers they're out of mesa arizona and uh, you can buy these for I think they're 75 bucks plus shipping and they do mix them up uh, custom by hand and everything so the color may turn out differently but they do a really good job um, as you can see I pretty much kind of duplicated what they've done there uh, in my own stuff uh, if you don't like the all the uh, age going through it and you just want the yellow mellow the mellow yellow whatever here's the other offering they have with the big thick finger grooves that I really like um, I did originally try to install it as a one piece, which it does not work. I mean, a, a two piece grip by putting the, uh, the scutcheons in there. It doesn't work out. Um, with the finger grooves, you can see I was trying to offset it. I kind of almost ruined this, this grip by doing that, but oh well, it's still neat. I hang on to them. These are really neat. They, they're expensive. Um, that's part of the, another reason you know, I'm not made out of money. So I tried to uh, figure out if I could do this on my own cheaper and make these kind of things. I got a little collection of grips over here that I've made, different types of ones. Uh, these are kind of the marbling. I uh, left a lot of imperfections in it, you can see. Uh, because I always felt that ivory is uh, you know, supposed to be like bone. So it's a natural item that kind of deteriorates and has imperfections. Um, the story, the real story is that I guess John Wayne's grips were not actually ivory. They're a Catalan, a type of Bakelite plastic that he liked so much he supposedly tea stained them. There were three pairs made up, um, two for the screen and one extra just in case they broke. Uh, here's another pair I made. And speaking of breaking, right after I got done making a video and showing you guys when I just finished this, they, they rolled off the table and broke right there. And that's the problem with this kind of material. <laughs> but um, that then that was what hurt me, man. Boy, when you pay some bucks for these things and then something like that happens, like it did happen to me originally <laughs> with the original grips. But anyway, there's some. Um, that I made. I'm actually I should fit these out to my gun. They're really nice. I uh, forgot how nice those looked. I again, um, like when you see when you buy something like this, I always thought, man, this is just not really, you know, this doesn't look like ivory to me. At least it doesn't to me. So I did my take on what I would think, you know, a more of a whiter colored ivory would, you know, have. Of course, with my finger grooves and this you know the spots and the aging and whatnot so um let's see what else we got in here here's another one i made this has got heavy very heavy uh 
I was really, when I was doing some of the making of these and uh, like this one, I was really into the heavy antiquing of it. And I just learned over time that, man, I just, I started to not like it so much. Here's another that I did. I, I, I don't mind this one so much. It's got some, you know, blotches and things. And then this one I added, um, you can actually see the pitting that I've done here. Just trying to give it more patina, I guess you could say. So, anyway, with that in mind, just kind of showing you some stuff, showing you some John Wayne stuff that I like, and of course my six guns that I, you guys have seen in the videos, hopefully if you've been around the channel a lot. And um, I see right behind me here, I've got, I've been actually uh, buying his stuff on uh, Blu-ray now. So I got this one, uh, this was a cool deal. I found this one at Walmart, the Cowboys, the Green Berets, and the Searchers. Really cool deal. I think it was under, I don't know, it was fairly cheap for Blu-ray. Of course, you watch now, they're going to replace Blu-ray. <laughs> um, this one was a great find. Walmart, again, the Real Bravo, one of my favorites. Uh, to get this one on Blu-ray was amazing. I scooped that up fast. El Dorado, bought this on Amazon. Um, El Dorado, one of my favorites again because this is kind of a remake of Real Bravo, so had to have that one. Bought that on Amazon. The War Wagon with uh, Kirk Douglas. Um, this is a great one. I, it's just the way they play off each other in the movie. And then um, John Wayne actually doesn't get his uh, ivory handled uh, 45 until later. Uh, where the guy has it and he says man's wearing my gun and he says well if it if it's yours why don't you take it from him and he just you know lays the guy out and he says yep it's mine and the guy comes over and he says any trouble here and he says no no and john wayne says that yep, the gun belongs to me but the shells belong to him and you can tell him he can come get them anytime one of my favorite lines off that of course rooster cogburn um very uh, great movie as he started to do both of these towards the later of his career uh true grit came first then came rooster cogburn with uh katherine hepburn which is this is a really fun movie he's got the gatling gun in the end going down river and of course true grit with uh maddie ross <laughs> anyway um i didn't care for the remake to me, that's you just don't remake these kind of movies. The, this is something special that can never be redone with any other actor. Hollywood today, you just can't, um, you just can't do it. Uh, he was a, he was. They broke the mold after old Duke. So anyway, I'm Bat Jack JW. Um, one other thing before I quit it out here, um, subliminal, I guess uh, in a way, um, but it's there in a lot of my videos is. John Wayne, some of you know, some of you don't, some of you real fans really know. John Wayne is wearing always, usually, what is he always wearing, right? Come on. He usually wears a bracelet of some sort. Uh, I picked that up uh, quite a, while I was, uh, you know, just always scanning through his movies, and I, I noticed that he always wears a bracelet. And he wears multiple bracelets, and it's kind of hard to keep track of exactly what and where. Um, supposedly, when he was doing the Green Berets, um, somebody had given him a, a military commemorative bracelet. I could be wrong, something like that. And then he also wore some copper, bra copper bracelets, and then he uh, wore a Indian Navajo bracelet, I believe, too. Now, this one here is just a standard copper bracelet. Now, the cool thing about this is I bought this at Tucson, Arizona, at old Tucson Studios, in the building that was used in the movie El Dorado where he went in to buy the shotgun for James Caan. That same building is still there at old Tucson where they filmed that movie, and I bought this bracelet in that building. Yes, pretty cool. That is no joke. That's a real thing. I, I, I seriously, I bought this in that store in Old Tucson in Arizona. That place is like Disneyland for me because that is where they filmed all this stuff. Um, here's another one I got. This is just a thicker copper bracelet that I wear in my uh, videos. And this one has my name on it, Bat Jack jw right there so i just kind of in you know i start wearing these um i wear them quite often even off camera even uh, when i'm not making videos i just kind of got used to wearing them and i like them and it's kind of uh in a way my sense of a lot of this stuff that i do in my channel and my videos even being at wearing these bracelets um wearing my six gun or showing you guys this kind of stuff is my homage to john wayne 
um, you know, God rest his soul because he was really an amazing person, an amazing actor. So, anyway, I'm Batchack JW, and uh, that's my video on John Wayne stuff. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for watching, you guys. Like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate everybody that has supported this channel, support this video, uh, watch the stuff. You guys make it happen. Uh, if it wasn't for you, wouldn't be doing this. <laughs> anyway, thanks, guys.